Hey friends, hope you're doing fine. Have you ever thought about creating your own custom layers in TensorFlow Keras? If so, then let's have a look at this video, how you can do this. Now, to get started, what I did here was I imported TensorFlow and also Keras and also the MNIST, the famous MNIST dataset. And then I loaded the dataset here with tuples, Xtrain and Xtest, and then I reshaped it to have the original shape like 28 by 28, to have it as an image and not as a flattened uh, array. We also convert it into float data type and divide by 255. That's the default setting in order to get the training and the testing data set. But now the interesting part becomes how can we create our own custom layer? Because normally what we do is we use the default layers in Keras, which could be uh, conf2d, could be max pooling, uh, could also be normal dense layers, flatten, and so on. Now, in order to create your own custom layer, this would be the block to do it. So what we do is basically we inherit, so we create a class, the name of the class could be anything, but we inherit from layers.layer, .layer, which is the class in Keras, and then we simply have two functions, an init call, where we also instantiate the initial function, or initialized function from the super, so from the parent class, which is the layers here. And then we can define any kind of layer we want. So in my case, what I did was I simply added here the convolutions, said 32, um, in this case, filters, and a kernel size of five, and then I added the max pooling. And the second very important function is that we have a call inside our custom layer in our block. And this call simply takes then during the training the tensor. And then we simply specify here that we want to apply our convolutional layer we define up here. And we also then wrap this in a readle function. Uh, and finally, of course, we also add a pooling layer to it. And then we simply return the output. So that's the idea. So having written this code like that and this block, we can then use this block either in the sequential or in the functional API in Keras. In this case, I did it here for the functional API, but you see that we can define a normal input layer. The shape is 28 by 28 because we reshaped our MNIST dataset up there in this shape, and then we can apply these blocks. So here, this specific layer simply refers to our custom layer up here, which simply uses convolutions, max pooling, and also relu during the call. So this call is then actually executed when we basically call the block, we instantiate it and then we call it with the input we get from the prior line of code. And here I simply added two blocks, then I flatten the data, I added the dense layer because we have 10 classes, the numbers from 0 to 10, and finally then I created the model and then I compiled and trained the model. So we can see that here, history, I fitted it just for three epochs just to take a look that that works, and we see we get an accuracy of 97.9%. So of course you can add additional layers and so on, but the main point here really is uh, to learn how we can apply or create our own custom layers like that. And then I did the same uh, one more time in here. The only difference here is that I defined that within the initialization of the layer, I wanted to give the, the end user, in this case, I want to define myself here that the convolutions or the amount of convolutions. Because in my first example here, I set the convolutions fixed to 32. And this time, uh, on the other hand, I defined that when we create or instantiate the block, then we want to specify how many convolutional uh, filters we want to give here. So it's basically the filter size in here. And uh, this convolution then is simply added here in the conf2d uh, layer, and the same, uh, the, the rest is the same. And then you see that here, in this case, I defined the block for this specific model too. But this time I specified here for the first one, 32, for the second one, 64, and so on. And then I again compiled the model. Uh, then we can see here what the structure looks like. And then I simply fitted it just for three epochs to see whether that works. And I did this. And uh, here finally you can see that we got, considering the accuracy, a little bit better than the prior. Of course, we use more filters, so that's probably the reason for that. And of course, you can ev get even better. That, that's not the point. You can use transfer learning and other kinds of things, which then I con continued here with EfficientNet. Uh, but the main point really was to drive home or to understand how you can use and create your own custom layers in Keras. And uh, the, the takeaway or the, what you need to understand is that you simply inherit, uh, you create a class and inherit from the layers.layer uh, 
class in Keras, and then you can define an init function and a call function. And during this call function, you can actually use whatever kind of functions and layers you want and implement them. And then of course, you can also, uh, well, shorten your code, because if you define a very complicated and specific layer, then you can simply call this specific layer inside your model, and you don't have to write this again and again, right? That's also one of the benefits in creating custom layers. So that's it for this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, then please give this video a like. If you want to see more of this, just let me know. Also write this in the comments and uh, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot and hopefully see you then in the next video. Until then, best guys.